So welcome to the Mercedes CLS AMG 350 diesel. This one is a V6 diesel under the bonnet here, but it's the AMG pack and sports pack at that on the outside as well. This is a user's car, Peter in Kilkenny, so I put his car forward for a review. So we'll have a look around this car and see what it's like. And if you want your car reviewed in this channel, it's Bob Flav at thenextgear.com. But whatever happens next, hit the subscribe button and we'll have a look around this car and see what it's all about. Right, this is the interior of a 2012 car. I just have to turn down the volume on the radio, which is there. Yeah, there we go, okay. So you're not gonna notice a whole lot of difference in this car. When you're looking at it first, you don't really notice a lot of difference in the interior from its 2012 cousin. But actually, that screen is not the standard one. That screen's been replaced with an Android system. It's one of the cleverest things I've seen in a long time. So you can go in and out of different systems here and be able to, like it looks like a Mercedes system, but it's not actually. You can go along here and go to apps and you can go to YouTube and you can watch a YouTube video right here from 2012. Very, very clever screen. Something a little bit unique and something you're not really gonna to notice too much on. Uh, also down here, now I watched my own video on that this morning, so I got an extra view. <laughs> 40,000 subscribers nearly there. Um, but the interior itself is absolutely immaculate. I do like that uh, kind of wood effect across the middle. That was very nice. Uh, this one has heated seats dual zone climate control this one as well and it has the old radio system so if you want to go back into the ordinary radio system you can and uh, that will allow you to do it's one of these buttons here somewhere but everything is still here so ac and all that stuff is still on the bottom this is all hooked into the mercedes system inside it's just got this exterior bit from android on, on it too which makes it a touchscreen which was not standard in 2012 so you get a touchscreen in this one as well and you can use it as a radio as normal Seat position, this has a leather steering wheel, very nice, and full leather seats on it as well, which is really nice. Dash cam is installed in this already, and Peter tells me that he will, uh, for a fee, leave it in. <laughs> it's hardwired into the system, so it automatically starts up. Plenty of storage in here too. Down here, I've got a, a connector for all the dash cam stuff up there. There's also a USB port in there. Um, there's a 12 volt socket over there. Remote release for the boot. Parking brake is over here. Full auto as well. Attached to that V6 out in front, which is very nice. LED lights in this one too, and LED lights on the rear. He's kept it incredibly well. Two electric seats, both sides, with three memory functions. So you can have it on all of those kind of bits as well. Uh, there's This is flawless. I can't really, for a 2012, it's kept incredibly well. Really, really clean on the inside. Now, I fit neatly in here, and I really like the seating position. I don't know what happened to Mercedes seating position. It seems to have changed. It seems to be, this is a nice, this is, I feel low in the car, and yet I'm high enough out to see the bonnet across top and the whole lot. This has slightly lower suspension, well, air suspension on this one too, uh, and slightly different AMG alloys on it as well. So there's a lot going on. Now, I'm going to shift and have a look and see what the back seat is like. Come on. So Peter is not a small chap. And yet, I have a full fist behind on both seats. Easy peasy. It's pretty dark back here because the rear windows have been tinted, including the back rear window too. Uh, this is a four seat only. You actually get a glove box near the in the middle, two cup holders, uh, a little so slot in front of that, a 12 volt socket here, and you have an armrest as well. It's pure luxury in the back of this car. It really, really is. Uh, these seats do not fall flat in the 2012 model. And so it is a four seat car. The boot is big enough for all of the passengers bits and pieces. We'll get to that in a minute. And back here is perfectly sublime actually. Roof line, I suppose it is a little bit on the slope inside here in the back, but like if you're very tall, you might not, you might be hopping your head against the roof of this. I'm not, and I'm six foot one, whatever that is in, uh, you know, meters. Anyway, this is good. I like it. I've even got lights on my feet. Peter's put in some blue lights on my feet here as well. Right, let's look at the boot before we go for a spin. So the boot is, as you'd expect, in the Mercedes. Big. That spring's open, by the way. Uh, the boot does go back a long way. This has not got a ski loader in it, so you're not going to be able to load things all the way through. But you can get an adaptation with a roof of these things, but on a roof box, which is kind of weird. Uh, Peter has also included a non-slip mat in the back of this for storing all of your kind of wet kit and other stuff. And when I say non-slip, it's actually pretty good because it doesn't slide forward when you hit the brakes first. It doesn't always slide forward. It's a big boot. It's also got my favourite shopping bag hook. 
my favorite one it's like a little coat hanger it's the perfect one because it actually hangs the bag from it very clever don't know where it all went wrong for mercedes when this when this stopped being put in there uh, it should be always in there it's a brilliant system anyway let's get for a drive so there is an electric steering wheel electric seats on both sides of the front uh, the next best cameras which you heard a second ago is booted up there and this has an amg screen that comes up for the dash which is very good i love this screen this is probably the most novel thing i've seen in the car in years this idea you can replace the old-fashioned mercedes system which is very old-fashioned you look at it, it looks like a, a grandfather clock or an old windy radio uh, and you replace it here entirely with the android system so it looks really well seating position of these cars is lovely this one is ever so slightly lowered but the seating position is actually really nice you can see the end of the bonnet but you're not sitting very high in the car you feel low down you feel nice this has some modes there is some economy modes uh, then you have um, the other system the power as well so you're back into manual there and you can go to economy and then you can go to sport we'll try the sport out in a minute uh, we'll go back down to the economy mode three liter v6 engine in this completely bulletproof uh, it, anything v6 from mercedes over the last few years has been spot on it has no problems. It, I don't think there's that much of a recall ever been done on them. Um, they just work very, very well. Dual zone climate control is also nice. So much room in this car. I was always surprised they didn't put in, uh, uh, they didn't let the seats go flat. So you can put even more room in it, but they don't. It is a four seat coupe. Now for the road, we'll hit the sport button. And we see maybe Peter won't freak out if he thoughts of his car going very quickly. Should be fine, be fine. Oh, that V6 pulls so nicely. Such a good progression of feel to go the whole thing. It really does feel like the car is just wafting along the road. Um, there is uh, really good shocks in this car as well. It really takes the edge out of the road. Now, very thin tires, which means you will feel the road under you. You can actually feel whether the road is painted or not on the white lines, but that's okay because you, you don't buy this car to be subtle. You buy this car to be a little bit noisy and a little bit visually noisy too. This was the last of what Mercedes did in looks wise, I think that really was cutting edge. This was properly a cutting edge looking car on the outside. They've somewhat lost that. They still keep it at the front a little bit. The back of the modern CLS is, it's okay. Hardly a challenge, but it's okay. Um, this one I think is actually tidier and a nicer car to look at in general. Proper future collector's item maybe we'll see as the years go by maybe it will maybe it won't it will depend very much on um, on the way the market goes when it comes to electric cars or diesel cars or petrol cars but you can be sure that this 3 liter v6 is going to be around for years and years and years to come there's not going to be a drop off of this i don't think for one second that electric is going to take over in any way shape or form there's that v6 pull V6 kicked in, yo. <laughs> it's uh, such a lovely car. Lovely power that goes with it. It's not a big hitch in the face power. It's a, a kind of a power. It's more like a surge, like a pressure that comes onto you. And that's the kind of power you want because that's the kind of power that's frightening. After you're going over 100 kilometers an hour, it becomes a little bit frightening. Now, Peter submitted this car because it is for sale, and he thought I'm able to help with the sales. And I'm interested in looking at these older cars as well, because it lets me see where cars are going. Because I go through so many cars that you forget what the last one was, you forget what the one before that was, or what was involved in that car. So you really do change things around by looking at a used car, because you can see where in time, 2013, was brilliant. Now I have to say a really good update for any older car would be one of these kind of screens, not necessarily that one, but one of these kind of additional screens where you could change out whatever came with your car into something like that, and you've really modernized it because that's a full touch screen with YouTube and, and uh, Wi-Fi and Android Auto and the whole show all built into it, but that didn't come standard in 2013 in this car. So it's quite nice, but you don't lose the old thing. Um, it's, the screen looks fairly similar. It looks like it's supposed to be there. You can find this car, I'm sure, on the usual outlets like Dundee or Carzone or somewhere. Uh, it is for sale. I'll put a link in the description down below to the actual sales point. By the time you watch this, it might already be sold. So just remember that because I think this is something a little bit special, a little bit different. If you enjoyed this review in some way, hit the subscribe button. Thank you very much. There is a number of support options down below as well if you really want to. But until the next time, I will see you on the far side.
So if you're still watching at this point, you can be like Peter, get in touch with me about reviewing your used car. Uh, obviously there's rules and terms and conditions, but just email me, bobflav at the nextgear.com. If I'm interested or it looks like an interesting car, I'll be in touch immediately with you. Uh, there's quite a number of cars already getting in touch with me, but be like Peter, submit your car and have it ready for sale, nice and clean and tidy. 10 out of 10, Peter, brilliant car, really enjoyed today. Hopefully you will find a reason to hit that subscribe button now. But until the next time, I'll see you on the far side. Go and drive Peter's car again, right?